Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about a very interesting subject. Um, it's the Feast of Trumpets Rapture. And first of all, in order to understand the Feast of Trumpets Rapture, you must rightly divide the word of truth and take all the word of God as a whole. So there's going to be many scriptures uh, scattered throughout the word of God that um, when put together properly, a picture of the Feast of Trumpets rapture should be very clear. Um, the place in the Bible where the Feast of Trumpets uh, is mentioned first is um, actually in Leviticus. And uh, it was one of the seven feasts of Israel that God ordained for the children of Israel. And what these feasts were, were appointed times. Um, God makes it clear in His Word that everything happens at the appointed time. So, what I'm going to do is read from Leviticus chapter 23. That's very short. There's only about three verses here that talks about it. And... Leviticus 23, 23 starts out saying, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So, this would be feast number five out of seven. As I said, there are seven feasts that God ordained for the children of Israel. And all of these feasts, by the way, um, everything in the Word of God, all these pictures and types, points to Jesus Christ. Whether you're talking about the temple that God told them to build or this, uh, the sanctuary in the wilderness, all of these things point to Jesus Christ, and these feasts point to His comings. And I'm going to try to explain it today in a way that makes sense, I hope. Um, but obviously the first four feasts are already fulfilled. So a couple of the most obvious ones is Passover and Pentecost. So let's do a brief overview of the first four feasts. Um, Passover was during the week of unleavened bread and it shows that Jesus was our perfect Passover lamb slain per the requirements of the law. Remember John the Baptist says, um, uh, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. And then you have the week of unleavened bread and Jesus is the bread of life and he broken for us. Um, he lay in the grave and, of course, leaven represents sin and being unleavened bread. Jesus is a picture of bread, the bread of life with no sin. Then you have uh, first fruits. That's resurrection day when Jesus rose from the dead. He, he was presented to the Father, or he presented himself to the Father after rising from the dead as an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. And um, then, of course, you have Pentecost, which is the fourth one, and this is the Feast of Weeks. It's a picture of the harvest of wheat, and God gave us the Holy Spirit. We are now in the church age, the time period when souls are harvested for God's kingdom. So, the first four feasts are pretty obvious. I mean, looking back in hindsight, it's easy to see that they're fulfilled. But there are still yet three more feasts. Now, actually in the Bible, and I'm going to just throw this in as an extra side note, um, there were eight feasts, but the eighth one was not ordained of God, and it was the Feast of Purim um, with Esther and Mordecai in the book of Esther. Um, that might be a different subject for another time, but right now I'm just going to deal with the seven feasts of Israel, in particular right now the Feast of Trumpets. And the Feast of Trumpets, as I've said, is for us the rapture of the church. But now, 
Um, also, the uh, last couple of feasts, uh, you have the Day of Atonement, which is, um, for us, it's the judgment seat of Christ as we give account of works done in the body, whether they be good or bad. And then you have the Feast of Tabernacles, which for us as Christians is seven years to tabernacle or dwell with the Lord in heaven. So, here's the question that might be asked. Why do Gentiles spiritually partake of these feasts which were meant for the Jews? Well, here's what the Bible says. In John 1.11, it says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And in Matthew 20.16, it says, So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. So the Jews, for whom the seven feasts of Israel were given, rejected their Messiah. So the first four feasts were for the Jews first, and lastly for the Gentiles. Uh, let's look at Isaiah 60, verse 3. Isaiah 60... Let me find it here. Isaiah 60, verse 3. And it says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So, God already knew ahead of time that the Jews were going to reject him. And Paul said that blindness happened in part to the Jews so that the Gentiles could come in and be grafted onto the tree. So, the first four feasts, when Jesus came, he fulfilled all four of those feasts in A.D. 32. And I'm going to be showing you some things out of the Bible in other uh, videos about how very precise God is right down to the day, right down to the hour. And there is no question that God has everything preordained, prearranged. And it would be very foolish thinking indeed to think that anything in this universe is going to catch him by surprise. So, Jesus came to his own. His own did not receive him. So now those feasts can be for us because he is our Passover lamb. Uh, he gave us the Holy Spirit to indwell us. He was the acceptable sacrifice to the Father so that we could have eternal life. Um, his body was broken for us on the cross. Uh, so now, what about the last three feasts? Well, it says... The last shall be first, and the first last. So now, these last three feasts, which is uh, trumpets, day of atonement, and tabernacles, these feasts are now going to be for us first. So at the beginning of the tribulation, um, you're going to have the rapture. We're going to have the day of atonement where we stand before the Lord. Um, we're going to have the tabernacles where we dwell with him in heaven. And then exactly seven years later, Jesus Christ is going to come back once again on the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm sorry, on the Feast of Trumpets. Um, he's going to have a judgment of the nations, a day of atonement where all the Jews will stand before him and he will take care of that. And then he will tabernacle with men during the millennial Sabbath reign of 1,000 years of peace. So, the first shall be last and the last first. And that's very true with these feasts. That's the kind of picture I'm wanting to show you from Scripture and, and tie these verses in together. So, next, so, there's also another interesting side note that I want to discuss for just a minute. And we're always talking about midway through the tribulation. Well, what does that really mean? Well, if you look at the calendar, you'll notice that midway through a tribulation, if it starts on the Feast of Trumpets, would be Passover. Now, this is where the devil is really twisted. Because on Passover, the Antichrist is going to go into the rebuilt temple and declare himself to be God. And I believe for this, he's going to get himself killed. The Bible says that um, he'll be uh, killed with a sword. 
So, what will happen is, he will be indwelt by Satan, and he'll rise from the dead, and all the world will wonder after the beast. So, he's going to mock um, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and in a sick, twisted way, his followers are going to follow after him and really think that he's God because uh, this Antichrist, this evil man, will be embodied and dwelt by Satan himself. And um, this will occur midway through the tribulation, which of course will be on uh, Passover. So, these are the kind of things I wanted to draw your attention to today. And I want to be getting into a, a Feast of Trumpets rapture pictured in Joshua 6, 5. Actually, in Joshua chapter 6. Um, as you know, the rapture was a mystery in the Old Testament. Um, it was hidden away, tucked away, but revealed to us by Paul. And there are elements found throughout Scripture when it comes to the rapture. There are Old Testament types and examples, such as Enoch. That is why Enoch will not be one of the two witnesses that comes back, because he really doesn't uh, mean anything to the Jewish people like Moses and Elijah do. It is Moses and Elijah who, through signs and wonders, will establish themselves as the prophets of the Almighty God during this time of Jacob's trouble. So, we will be getting more into uh, Joshua 6.5, and a lot of other verses, so uh, stay tuned, and God bless you.